Hello everybody, today we're going to learn about the broadcast receivers uh, inside of Android. So we're going to learn what they are and how we can use them. So um, the first thing you should check out is, uh, as always when you're learning something new about the Android system, is going to be the developer page for broadcast receivers. So um, you know, go ahead and go to developer.android.com, search for broadcast receiver, it'll bring you to this page, and you can read a little bit about it here. Once you have done that, then uh, come over to GitHub because we're going to be using this source code example right here. So you can uh, come to github.com slash foamy guy slash broadcast receiver example um, and go ahead and use this download zip button right here uh, or use your favorite Git client. Get a copy of this source code and go ahead and get that imported into Eclipse because we're going to be using this to learn about the broadcast receivers. So uh, once you get that, you get it imported into Eclipse. I have mine pulled up over here. The first thing um, that we want to take a look at is going to be this class right here, myfirstreceiver.java. So I have that open right here. Um, and this is uh, the broadcast receiver. So um, let's talk just for a brief second about what is a broadcast receiver. A broadcast receiver is an Android component that allows you to listen for an intent that's been broadcast. It could be broadcast by the system or it could be broadcast by another application uh, within the system and you're listening for that intent and when it gets broadcast you receive it and you can take some action on it. Um, so that's at a high level what a broadcast receiver is and, the, and if that doesn't make any sense to you just kind of keep watching and, and you'll see uh, an example of what that is and how we can use it here in a second. So go ahead open up my first receiver can see uh, it extends broadcast receiver not a whole lot going on inside here we have a tag for logging and then uh, we have to override this public void on receive method and that takes two parameters uh, context and the intent so this is going to be the actual intent that got broadcast and then this is going to be the context uh, of that broadcast so you can go ahead and um, do anything you need to with that if you need to start an activity or something you can call context start activity um, the intent that comes in, it can pass in data to you. We'll see an example of that a little bit later. Um, so, but the, the bulk of what you're going to be doing here is just defining the code that you want to happen when this intent gets broadcast. So let's go ahead um, and see what that looks like. So I have an emulator up and running here. This program has already been run on my emulator, so it's already installed and running. Um, so let's go ahead, let's look at the logcat because this you can see right here in the on receive method what's going to happen when my intent gets received is we're going to make this log tag so nothing too fancy just yet but just a, a log tag so we know that we did in fact receive the intent so let's go ahead and pull up the emulator uh, the other thing you need here is a terminal with the adb so this is my adb terminal right here and we're actually going to broadcast our intent from the adb so to do that we're going to use the command adb shell because uh, this is a shell command so adb shell space am uh, which stands for uh, activity manager i think but am and there's another command that's broadcast so that means we want to broadcast an intent and then we have to give it a parameter here and we want the a parameter because that's going to be the name of the action and so the action here is uh, com dot and make my android app and broadcast example dot and then here's the name of the action uh, my custom action so uh, and we should be able to hit that okay so we did enter you see broadcast complete result zero nothing really happened over here on the emulator but you can see inside the log uh, we did get our log tag come through so we know that that intent did get broadcast and we did receive it um, so uh, let's dig a little bit deeper to see how you can, um, now that you've seen a broadcast receiver do something, let's, uh, let's talk about how you can create your own broadcast receiver. So I'm going to actually create a second one here. New class and not very, feeling very creative with names today. So it's going to be my second uh, receiver. And so here's what we got to do to make a broadcast receiver. We say, we make a new class, we say extends, extends broadcast receiver. And we'll go ahead and do a control shift O to import that broadcast receiver. Now you see we got a red underline here on the name of our class. So let's check that out. The type my second receiver must implement the 
inherited abstract method uh, on receive. So if we actually click that, it will help us out a little bit because we get this option here. We can just say add unimplemented method. So that will go ahead and create the method stub for us. Um, unfortunately, it does these arguments with generic names like arg0 and arg1. So I'm going to go ahead and change that just to keep my code a little bit cleaner. So we'll say ctx and intent i and we got to do auto generated method stub so in this one instead of logging let's do a toast toast dot make text um, and so here again is where we would uh, an example of where we got to use this context that got passed to us so we're going to go ahead and use that ctx uh, in our make text method and then let's add some text and uh, second action received duration let's go with the toast in length short and don't forget your show method dot show so there we go now this one uh, this is our second broadcast receiver and you can go ahead and work along with me create one of these here uh, so what this will do instead of logging this will actually make a toast so we should be able to see it on the screen when this happens so that's our that's everything we need to do for the broadcast receiver class itself um, the only thing that's left to do in order to make it work is we have to do, uh, we have to declare it inside of the manifest. So I'm going to jump over to the manifest. You can see here is uh, the first receiver, the one that we just looked at, my first receiver right there. Um, and you can see here is the name of the action that we had to broadcast. So remember I typed out the name of that action inside the ADB window. Um, and this right here is where we define the name of that action. Now it's just uh, a string, but it is um, kind of proper, proper uh, or best, best practices, if you will, um, to put your package name in front of the name of your actual action, um, just because it keeps uh, keeps the system nice and clean. Make sure you're not overlapping on anybody else's application if you put your package name in there. So um, that's the declaration of a receiver. We're going to go ahead and make another one here for our second receiver. And so we do receiver tags. Let's go ahead and give us some space and let's make name Andrew Cohen name equals some quotes dot and we got to make it the same as our class so my second receiver and then we need a uh, because it's a receiver we need to define the intent filter right here so this is going to be the intents that we listen for um, and again these intents they could come from the system like let's say if you wanted to be notified of when the device boots up. There's a boot completed action, um, so you would put that action inside your intent filter here. For now, we're looking at just custom actions, um, but you would do this exact same setup if you wanted to listen for any of the broadcasts that the system has itself. Uh, so intent filter, and we need a action tag, Android name equals, so this is the actual string for your action um, so and again like I said it's always best practice to put your applications uh, package name in here as well so I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, make my Android app and broadcast example and then we're gonna call this one second action um, and normally it would be a good idea like if you're implementing this in a real application obviously you want to keep your names very descriptive so you know exactly what that action is going to do but right now we're just looking at examples so we got second action is going to be good enough for right now um, and we got to close off this tag action tag like that save um, so we got our intent filter and just going to clean up some of these extra white spaces here Got our intent filter, we got our receiver declaration, so we should be good to go. Go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna run this on the emulator. And give it just a second to start up here. Let's go ahead and open up our logcat again. And let's clear this out just so we have a fresh slate. Okay, so now we're running. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go back out of this activity, back to the home screen. We'll check out that activity here in a second. Um, but for now, let's just go to the home screen and let's pull up the ADB again and we're gonna send the second action this time. So I'm just gonna hit up to get my last command and then I'm just gonna change this last part here. Second uh, action, right like that. So we should see a toast pop up when we do this. And right there it is, second action received. So that's our toast. And again, that came from the my second receiver class right here. So um, the next thing that we're gonna look at, you can actually create these receivers instead of declaring them in your code as their own class you can actually create them 
dynamically at runtime. So that's what we're going to take a look at now. And to do that, let's go ahead and open up the main activity. You should have gotten this with the downloaded code. Um, so inside main activity, let's check out kind of top to bottom what we got going on here. Um, so we got some variables. Our relative layout uh, is the background because we're going to use that here in a second. Um, basically, what we're going to do with this with this dynamic receiver, we're going to we're going to create a receiver and we are going to send it um, a, a broadcast, and that broadcast is going to contain some data, and that data is going to be a color, and we're going to take that data out of the intent uh, that gets broadcast, and we're going to set the background to that color. So that's kind of high level what we're doing. So let's dig in. We got a relative layout. Um, uh, string um, so this time since we're making a dynamic receiver we're not going to have it declared in our manifest um, so we're going to have to create the intent filter uh, kind of manually if you will through Java code so here is our action string right here um, and you can see again we got the package name in front of that and this time our action name is change color um, we got a broadcast receiver variable right there and then we got a log tag as always. So then we go into on create, call super obviously, set content view. Um, let's pull out a reference to the background layout right there. We're using find view by ID. Um, and then we're going to declare this broadcast receiver. So here's what we have to do. Instead of making it in its own class like we did before, if we want to make a dynamic one, uh, we can do that because it's just a Java object. So we say new broadcast receiver. We, uh, we obviously we override that on receive method again and there you can see we got our two parameters context and intent this time I call it data um, but it's still just an intent object so what we're gonna do is inside of the on receive so this is again the code that's gonna run when we actually receive the intent we are going to say data dot get string extra and the name of the string extra we're interested in is color um, so this receiver is expecting you to pass one extra which is just um, kind of like a, a parameter, if you will, it's just a piece of data that you can pass along inside of an intent. Um, so we're passing one extra and we're going to name it color. So we're going to go ahead and pull it out. We store it inside the string hex color. We'll go ahead and make a toast just so we can see uh, on the screen that we received the intent and we're about to change the color. We'll go ahead and log it as well. And then uh, we have a null check uh, just to make sure that the color that we received is not null. Um, basically just to make sure we did actually receive a color. And then we'll go ahead and we will say background layout dot set background color is uh, and we'll pass it color dot parse color and the hex color. And obviously I left a little note in here that says um, eventually if we wanted this to be kind of fully featured application we need to validate the color string right because I mean you could just pass in any string that you wanted and if it's not a color string then obviously this method is gonna um, it's gonna throw an exception if you pass it something that's not a color so we should probably validate that but for now let's just trust the fact um, that we're gonna pass it in a color so um, that is everything we need for the broadcast receiver right there and the next thing we need to do is declare the intent filter so we say tint filter change color filter equals new intent filter and uh, you have to pass it a parameter of the action and remember uh, this action change color that is the string variable that's right here action change color um, and that's going to be the action string that we're listening for and the very last thing that you need to do uh, once you have all of that set up is you call this register receiver method right there register receiver that's a method of context so we can call it from our activity without anything in front of here and we will pass it two things our receiver reference that we created back up here and our intent filter that we created right here so we pass it the receiver and we pass it the intent filter it will take care of the rest and the only the last thing to see in this uh, activity here is um, whenever you're creating an intent filter or I'm sorry a, a broadcast receiver dynamically uh, like with inside of an app activity what you want to do is when you're done with it uh, you got to remember to unregister that receiver otherwise it stays listening in the background there so um, in this case I just override on stop because we're gonna be done with it after that right because our activity is not on the screen anymore um, and inside of the on stop we'll go ahead and call unregister receiver and we pass it again the reference to our receiver so let's go ahead and see that in action on the device so I've got it installed already um, broadcast example up at the top there let's go ahead and run that so here's main activity you can see there's not a whole lot going on here uh, this is just the default layout that you get when you create a new project so we have hello world in there um, and so let's pull up the log head again 
in the emulator there. And so this time uh, we're gonna do it a little bit differently, right? Because we need to pass the parameter. We need to pass that color extra, remember? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit up again. Shell broadcast AMA and our action, instead of second action, it's gonna be change color. And in order to pass extras, what you do is you use the, uh, I believe it is the E parameter like that, E. And then you wanna pass, uh, the next thing is the string that you wanna pass. So we're gonna say, Hashtag, because you need that for a color, uh, or pound sign, lots of people get mad when I call it hashtag, pound sign, and then uh, let's just say, uh, pick some random hex colors here, is that six, two, three, four, five, six, okay, so that should be good, let's go ahead and hit enter on that, and if all goes well, nope, uh, error argument expected after E, so I did something wrong here, let's see, try one more time, E, um, maybe I think if it needs to be quotes, maybe put some single quotes in here and see if that works. Try that. Uh, no. Argument expected after. Um, is it double quotes? Hang with me here for just a second, guys. Maybe try double quotes. Still nothing. Okay. So is it um, A for action? Uh, this brings up a good point. Uh, this ADB shell AM broadcast command, this is all the, the helpers for this right here. Um, so you can see exactly all the all the things you're allowed to pass to this thing. Um, so we have E, this extra key is an extra string value. Uh, so that should be, oh, you know what I did? I forgot the uh, the name, right? So we have E, we need to pass it two things actually. When we have this parameter E here, we need to pass it a name. Uh, which I forgot to do, and that name, remember we pulled it out of the intent, we did uh, color, with all lowercase, so that's our name, color, and then after that we can do our hex color, so let's try that again, that's uh, four, and uh, let's do maybe like a BB, so there we go, try again, so E, dash E, space color, space, and then uh, the color string that you actually want to switch to. And we still got nothing, okay, so color, Try the quotes. There we go. So you got to use the quotes. Okay, so that's the key. So now you can see our uh, our emulator screen over here. It changed colors to this nice blue color um, because that's exactly what I typed in with this extra string right here. Um, so if we wanted to pass another one, whoops. Let's uh, pull that stuff back up. Emulator ADB. Let's pass one more just so we can see this work again. Um, maybe make these five five and let's make it a nice uh, let's do a green color this time like that and there we go enter and so there you go we got a green this time um, so so uh, this is kind of a trivial example uh, right because we're just changing the background color of an activity there's not a whole lot going on here um, but with the lessons that you've learned here how you can deny dynamically create a broadcast receiver um, you can do lots of fun stuff with these things uh, so hopefully this gives you a good idea of what they are um, at a high level and how you can use them to execute your code whenever an intent is broadcast. Um, and uh, in the next video, we're going to be using these broadcast receivers again. And what we're going to be using it for is to receive push notifications. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely uh, subscribe to my channel and that video will be up soon. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a little bit about the broadcast receivers and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.